Hi everyone. Today is Saturday, March 21st, 2020, and I'm bringing you just a really short movement snack. So let's start on our backs. And we'll start with our knees bent and our feet about hip width or maybe even wider. Maybe as wide as your mat. And your arms can just rest beside you for now. Notice how your breath is. The depth of it, the pace of it, where you're sensing the expansion in your body when you inhale. Following your exhale out nice and slow. Let your shoulders relax down and start to mobilize your head. Just turn your head a little bit to the right, center and a little bit to the left, exploring a pain-free range of motion, rolling on the back ledge of your skull. Each pass you can take just a little bit more movement, but no need to be greedy. And then bring your head back to center and send your feet out even a little bit wider, as wide as your mat. Bring your fingertips towards the front rim of your pelvis and try to keep that area nice and stable as you let your legs alternate between internal and external rotation. So this is a little bit different than a spine twist. In a spine twist, your pelvis might lift a little bit on one side, but with this particular movement, we're more interested in getting the thighs to rotate and also create just a little bit of that sweeping away from the body and, and then crossing the midline with the opposite leg. Rolling onto the outside and the inside edges of your feet. And then bring both legs back to center, heel toe your feet back in. And take your arms out to a T. You can go palms up or palms down, whatever feels natural. And we'll move through some pelvic tilts and tucks. This is one of my go-to movements. If I wake up in the morning and I feel a little creaky in my lower back, this almost always seems to soothe away any of that discomfort. So as you let your pelvis tuck under into that posterior pelvic tuck, you'll feel your low back press into the ground a little bit more as your tailbone curls up away from your yoga mat. And then as you send your tailbone down and tilt your pelvis forward towards the front of your thighs, you will feel your low back lift. Establish a rhythm that drives with your energy right now so it could be super slow motion or if you're listening to a song and you want to match up the rhythm of your movement to the rhythm of the music that might be kind of fun too let's do two more forward tilt and then the posterior tuck one more time Let's find our middle ground between those two extreme movements. Find neutral pelvis, neutral spine. For some of us, that might mean there is still a little bit of a curve in the low back. Reach your arms straight up over your shoulders. And then you're just gonna take your right arm and reach it over your head, but also a little bit to the right on a diagonal. Try to keep your spine in neutral without increasing the curve in your low back. Let's just do that two more times with this right arm. Reach it over your head and a little bit out to the side on a diagonal. And one more time. Now the left. Last round. Reach your right arm a little higher so that your shoulder blade moves away from your spine. 
and then relax back down. Two more times like that. Try to soften around your neck and let your scapula glide. Three times on the left. Scapular protraction, we're pulling it away from the spine. Last one. Now bring your legs up so that your knees land over your hips and your shins come parallel to the ground. You can point or flex through your feet, doesn't matter. Notice how your core responded to this change. Bring your hands towards the front of your legs and squeeze your legs into your hands as you keep your spine into neutral curves. Breathing for five, four, three, two, and then take a little break. Bring your feet to the floor, arms by your sides. <laughs> we have a growling dog. Bring your legs up towards your chest. Give a little rock, 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 forward and back as many times as you like. And then come up to tabletop. Shoulders about over the wrist, more or less. They might be slightly behind. And then we're gonna take a little side crunch here. So take a peek behind you, bring your right shoulder towards your right hip and vice versa, over to the left. Kind of wagging your tail, stretching on one side of your spine while you contract the muscles on the opposite side of your spine. And then come back to neutral. Start to tip your tailbone up, anterior pelvic tilt, and then tuck under, posterior pelvic tilt. Let's see if we can just move the pelvis and the low back here without moving the upper back, without moving the head. I always joke in my classes that this looks a little bit like a twerk. I don't know how to twerk, but I can do my pelvic tilts and tucks. Okay, find level in your pelvis, level in your low back. For me, you can see my neutral spine. I do have a little bit of a curve in my low back and you might too. So we're always aiming to find our neutral um, when that is um, the instruction. So it doesn't mean flat necessarily. Keep your head on straight without dipping your, your head up and down. You're gonna move into a little bit of upper thoracic extension and flexion. So once again, it feels a little bit like cat-cow, but it's a smaller movement because we're just trying to get the thoracic spine to move only. Arms stay nice and straight. Reach your heart forward slightly, and then pull your sternum back and up into the back of your spine. And then let's put it together, full cat-cow, originating that movement through the tailbone, low back, mid-back, upper back and head. Just breathe naturally, drop, drop your tail. Start to send that wave of flexion all the way throughout your spine, your head will move last. Slow and articulate cat and cow one more time. Think of moving your spine like a wave versus having a hinge point. A serpentine wave. And then take just a little rest for your wrists. You can sit back into a child's pose or a kneeling pose. Shelby, you can walk through if you need to, it's fine. <laughs> you can walk around the camera if you're camera shy. Since we have a home studio, it's possible that you'll see other humans or dogs in the video. <laughs> okay, let's come back to tabletop position and this time down onto the forearms. Step your right leg back, curl your toes under, rock forward and back just a couple of times. And then float your right leg about as high as your hip, feel your glutes fire up point and flex through your right ankle. 
And then keep your toes pointed, bend your right knee, squeeze your heel towards your tush. And we're just gonna keep our hip extended like this without bringing our spine into extension. And work the leg back and forth between internal and external rotation. So it feels a little bit like um, how you would kick a hacky sack. Sometimes we do this standing in my classes. So for external hip rotation, your knee is gonna angle outward and the toe is gonna angle inward. But that's different than taking our leg out to the side. So you're gonna keep it reaching back and just rotate your thigh bone in that hip capsule. Two more times, back and forth. And then bring your right knee back down, stretch your left toes back, a little rock. If your shoulders get tired, just take a little rest. You can always pause the video. And then float your left leg up, find some support from your backside here, keeping your natural spine curves, point and flex through your left ankle. And then keep the point, bend your left knee, squeeze your heel in tight towards your bottom, and alternate the hip internal external rotation. Last couple. And then set your shin down, knee down, foot down, rock yourself back into a little rest, child's pose or kneeling pose. Bring yourself back to tabletop position. One more time, we're gonna work on a little scapular mobilization. So we're gonna bring our shoulder blades together without bending the elbows, and trying to keep our back pretty straight, and then move your shoulder blades away from each other. Without overdoing a cat pose here, can you just get the scapula to uh, find a bit more width across your upper back? Head stays on straight, we'll retract and protract. Aiming to distinguish this particular movement from cat and cow. Two more. And then one more time, take a little rest. Downward facing dog, hands at least shoulder wide, maybe a little wider, curl your toes, slowly press your hips up and back and find a stretch throughout your spine. Make sure your head is in a good position for your neck. Option to fidget and pedal a little bit in your downward dog. Coming back to this practice of paying attention to your breath, to any sounds that you're healing, to any sensations that you're feeling. Lift your heels and walk yourself towards the front of your mat. Dangling pose, the feet can come wide if you prefer. Hands can dangle or touch the floor or we can wrap hands around the upper arms, elbows to sway potentially revolving the upper spine slightly as you twist and just allow your spine to cascade over your thighs. Heel toe your feet back in as you come back to center. You can take a hip width stance here for your chair pose or you can bring your legs all the way together. I'm a fan of bringing my legs together. Set your weight towards your heels, drop your seat Reach your arms either straight out in front of your shoulders or slightly upward as long as you can keep your neck full of ease and comfort. For me, that means taking my arms more on a diagonal away from my shoulders. Stay heavy in your heels, come up an inch and down an inch. Up an inch and down an inch. Three more. Stand all the way up, stretch through your sides, 
knit your low ribs together. Cactus your arms and make a pull up with your arms. Make it strong. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, pull down. Inhale, reach up. And then fold over your legs again. Bend your knees if you like. Step back, tabletop position. And then send your knees wider. Big toes can touch if you like. Hips towards heels. Walk your arms over to the right. Drop your hips back and to the left. Stretch through your left side. Notice how your breathing feels a little bit different here now that your trunk is a little closer to your legs. Can you breathe now into the back of your ribs, back of your lungs? Bring yourself back through the center. Same thing over to the left. Right hip heavy, right side of your spine stretched a little longer. Finding a posterior affected breath. Bring yourself back to neutral. Walk yourself up either to a kneeling pose or a comfortable seat. Close your eyes. Adjust until you feel comfortable. Center your awareness on your breathing rhythm. And fine tuning all of your senses to be present with your breath. Notice how this short practice has changed things, if at all. Subtle shifts, maybe more obvious transformations. I'd like to thank you for practicing with me today and I would love to hear your feedback. I would also love to hear what you would like as far as types of yoga classes that I could offer to you, especially for those of you who have already signed up to be a member of the virtual studio. Um, I'm hoping to have still the one full class a week for those of you who are members of the studio and then some shorter um, snacks like this for those times when you don't have a full hour to dedicate to um, your mobility and your meditation. So reach out. I hope you're having an awesome day. Namaste.